coverage begins at 1 Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. More on that game in a bit. First, we're going viral with Chris Canny. Check out this hilarious moment from last night. So Lakers forward Mike Beasley tried to enter the game. He had the wrong shorts. Come Pants on, are super wrong. Cool bees. And they didn't have extra shorts right there. He had to go by himself all the way back into the locker room. Oh, well, yeah, shorts. because, I mean, even if they had extra shorts right there, he's going to take those off. He's going to put on the game. Come on, bees. See, you see, know you're in the rotation now. He just can't get right, boss. He just can't get right. No, no, old Beasley, man. I, I think Beasley might have been in them trees or something before the game. <laughs> California breezy. I mean, like, you just think, you just don't put on the wrong stuff for the NBA game. Now, there have been some times where I have a suit and I traveled and the pants were different, but people couldn't see. Not like that. Yeah. You know, that's just an honest mistake. And we've seen guys have their jerseys on backwards, but not. It, it's rare. It, actually, we saw last year a guy forget his jersey as well. His jersey, yeah. Probably similar problem you're talking about with Michael. Beasley. I don't know State what the problem is. Yeah. yeah, he's in Oklahoma. Oh, yeah, he's in know, Oklahoma. If he, if he forgot his jersey, he probably wasn't there. BYOB. Probably wouldn't think he was going to play. B-Y-O-B. I know you don't know. <laughs> BYOB. Bring your own I, I, I got you. Bob. I don't. Whatever. Let's just talk football. If you invite... You know, this party, it's this party house. reference. Don't know what's happening. Ask uh, Margie and them. They'll know. <laughs> Margie. What's her name? Back to the <laughs> NFC Championship game. I love that they know my friends. Well, Last time these two played, they combined for 80 points. The Saints won, handing the Rams their first loss of the year. These teams know each other. They compete hard against each other. And according to Drew Brees, they respect each other. They're a phenomenal team. And uh, they had a great season. Um... You know, obviously, we played them, you know, midseason, and it was a hard-fought game on, on both sides of the ball. Um, but I think we had a feeling then that, obviously, we aspired to be in this situation, and I think we all had a feeling that, that, that they were going to be the team that, that, that we might face again, and so here we are. All right, Kenny, what are you expecting from this one? Well, right there, Drew Brees was spraying on the perfume and just trying to make the Los Angeles Rams feel good about themselves. Oh, yeah, and, got you know, the quarterback they're, they're out, watching. Yeah, they're outstanding. They had a great <laughs> season. We knew back in week nine I love that you it was going to go be tough, and we expected <laughs> to see them again at some point. No, let me tell you what, what's going to happen. Sean Payton and Drew Brees are going to try to cut the Rams' heart out on Sunday in that championship game because Drew Brees is looking at his career mortality, and he knows this is probably his mm, last, last best chance best to get to mm. the big game. Damn. So so they're going to try to take advantage of, of this opportunity for him. And you've got to look for Sean Payton to be aggressive, pull out all the stops. Nick, I know you said earlier that you expect to see some trick plays and that the Los Angeles Rams defense is going to have to play all four downs yeah. because you never know when Sean Payton is going to pull out a trick play. In the Philadelphia Eagles game in the divisional round, he pulled out a fake punt on the minus 30-yard line. So, I mean, mm -hmm. if you're willing to do it there, I mean, there's no, 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 nothing saying that you probably won't be willing to do it in the NFC Championship game when the stakes are even greater. So that's that's what I'm expecting to see from the Saints. Aggressive play calling all three phases of the game. Now, in terms of what the Los Angeles Rams are going to do, they're going to try to simulate what they did against the Dallas Cowboys in being able to run the football, being able to mm -hmm. use that offensive line, get some surge at the point of attack, and then allow Todd Gurley to get beyond the line of scrimmage and get first contact there. And then, of course, when you see Todd Gurley beyond the line of scrimmage, that's when he's best, when he has space to operate on the other side of the line of scrimmage. In order to neutralize that, I think Dennis Allen will mix up the front a little bit. You saw him use some under and some over front in their regular season matchup. He jumped into some bare looks. But ultimately, what it's going to come down to is being able to tackle. And I think that what the mm -hmm. Los Angeles Rams try to do, Sean McVay, they force you to try to make a decision whether you're going to play base defense or whether you're going to play nickel defense because they come out in 11 personnel. If you match them and you play nickel, they're going to run the football. So they're going to force your nickel to be a solid tackler. And that's when P.J. Williams has to step up the nickel back for the New Orleans Saints. If he's not an effective tackler when he's in those situations, when they're relying on him for run support, mm -hmm. then it's going to be tough for that Saints defense to get the Rams offense off the field. And Jen, I think it's a great question. Who has the edge? I, it's not obvious. I could easily lean to the home team in the Saints with Sean Payton and Drew Brees, or I could just go on the momentum and think that the Rams are going to be able to get revenge. The way they played those last three quarters, the last time they came here, they're like, man, we match up well against them. If we don't get off to a slow start, I like our chances. But Drew Brees, at this point in his career, playing in the dome with that crowd, to me, that is a tremendous edge over Jared Goff, his inexperience, and Sean McVay's inexperience because 
the partnership between Sean Payton and Drew Brees, we have seen it play out. We've seen the chemistry. We know they're going to come up with some new wrinkles. And, and the, I just believe it's on Sean McVay to manufacture plays to be able to protect his quarterback early. I do believe he is a big-time thrower of the football. But his confidence early, the momentum in this game early, that crowd noise early, I got to give that edge to Drew Brees and him be able to get it done. These last two years have been the easiest two years of him playing football. Why? Because he's got two running backs to be able to depend on. He never had that before. And he's got, for the first time in his career the last couple of years, or the first time in a decade, <laughs> a really good defense supporting him to where when the offense does stall, the defense can bail him out. When Earlier when we were talking trick plays, I'm also talking about lining up and going for it on fourth down. Let's talk about the divisional weekend for a moment. Two of the biggest plays in the Saints game, the fourth and one fake punt, mm -hmm. but also fourth and two near the goal line, going for it and getting a touchdown. On the other side in the Rams game, what was the biggest play of the game? Them stuffing a Dallas fourth and one run that Zeke couldn't get and the Rams ended up taking uh, the two score lead right after that. Mm -hmm. We know the Saints are gonna go for it. They went for 18 fourth downs this year. They converted 15 of them, one of the best fourth down teams in NFL history. Wow. And we know that that dome is going to be loud all night or all afternoon, except for in those spots, the big spots for the offense. Drew Brees is going to yeah. be able to go to the. And you got to, when you have There's a team, an eerie silence. Yes. When you got 80,000 and they're not saying anything. But your ability to be able to communicate one to another and run that offense, Nick, I think that's, that's a great point. And when you know the other team goes for it on fourth down. And you know Sean Payton will go for it on his own side of the 50. You know what that also means? Those spots where when we're watching games on Sunday, we're like, oh, they're not going for it. They're just trying to draw you off sides. Mm -hmm. You might actually get them to jump off sides yes. because you have to actually be prepared for it. I, to me, the Saints should win. But if Indomitian Sue can duplicate what he did in the divisional round against a banged-up Saints offensive line, mm -hmm. because we know Aaron Donald's going to show up. If that can happen with the, with the Rams' secondary, healthiest it's been since week one, that can neutralize their weakness at their linebacking core. And so if Sue shows up big, this could be a game that tilts in the Rams' favor. I want to bring up something both of you touched on, and that's Drew Brees. How important is this game for his legacy to try to make it back to a second Super Bowl if that window is somewhat closed? We don't talk about his age the way we talk about uh, Tom. Brady's. Well, as Drew Brees told me, I'm in as good a physical shape as any quarterback that's ever played this game or any quarterback playing now. I just don't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> so he threw a little shade out there to Tom Brady. Drew Brees, he's got the same type of staffing. He takes care of his body. But Drew Brees' legacy, it can grow. Because when you have won two Super Bowls, the reason why we didn't want to Eli bench last year. Oh, man, he won, won two, two Super Bowls. Nobody, nobody was saying Flacco shouldn't be benched because oh, he got one. Absolutely. And, and, and Breeze, when you, when you are going to finish first or second in every major regular season mm -hmm. passing category, if he gets the second championship, then you start talking about, wait, like, is Breeze Peyton Manning a conversation? Like, Breeze Favre, does he move ahead of him? Like, he, if, if, <laughs> I know I care about rankings much more than you do, but, like, if guys care about that stuff, the, the only thing missing from his resume other than a league MVP, which sure. he almost won this year, would be the second Super Bowl. One thing I think is a little edge they were one play one miracle in Minneapolis from being yep. in this same position mm -hmm. last year it's not like the Saints didn't came from nowhere yep. mm -hmm. they, they should have been in NFC championship game last year now they get it and now they get it at home no you're absolutely right but going back to the legacy conversation you're talking about the second best coaching quarterback of the last two decades in the National Football League and Sean Payton and Drew Brees it'd be a shame if they only have one Lombardi to show for that union all right, thanks, Chris. Coming up, is the Chiefs' offense too much for the Patriots to handle? That's next on First Things First. Well,